He would like to go into the budget for 1862, though without making a prejudicial statement. An abuse of constitutional rights could be undertaken by any side. This would then lead to a reaction from the other side. The Crown, for example, could dissolve Parliament twelve times in a row. That would certainly be permitted according to the letter of the Constitution, but it would be an abuse. It could just as easily reject cuts in the budget immoderately. It would be hard to tell where to draw the line there. Would it be at 6 million, at 16, or at 60? There are members of the National Association of this association that has achieved a reputation owing to the justness of its demands, highly esteemed members who have stated that all standing armies are superfluous. Well, what if a public assembly had this view? Would not a government have to reject this? There was talk about the sobriety of the Prussian people. Yes, the great independence of the individual makes it difficult in Prussia to govern with the constitution or to consolidate the constitution. In France, things are different. There, this individual independence is lacking. A constitutional crisis would not be disgraceful, but honourable instead. Furthermore, we are perhaps too well educated to support a constitution. We are too critical. The ability to assess government measures and records of the public assembly is too common. In the country there are a lot of Catiline characters who have a great interest in upheavals. This may sound paradoxical, but everything proves how hard constitutional life is in Prussia. Furthermore, one is too sensitive about the government's mistakes, as if it were enough to say this and that cabinet minister made mistakes, as if one wasn't adversely affected oneself. Public opinion changes. The press is not the same as public opinion. One knows how the press is written. Members of Parliament have a higher duty to lead opinion to stand above it. We are too hot-blooded. We have a preference for putting on armour that is too big for our small body, and now we're actually supposed to utilise it. Germany is not looking to Prussia's liberalism, but to its power. Bavaria, Württemberg, Baden may indulge liberalism, and yet no one will assign them Prussia's role. Prussia has to coalesce and concentrate its power for the opportune moment, which has already been missed several times. Prussia's borders, according to the Vienna Treaties of 1814-15, are not favourable for a healthy, vital state. It is not by speeches and majority resolutions that the great questions of the time are decided. That was the big mistake of 1848 and 1849. But by iron and blood. Last year's appropriation has been carried out, for whatever reasons. It is a matter of indifference. He is sincerely seeking the path of agreement, whether he finds it does not depend on him alone. It would have been better if one had not made a fait accompli on the part of the Chamber of Deputies. If no budget comes about, then there is a tabula rasa. The constitution offers no way out, for then it is one interpretation against another interpretation. Summum ius summa inuria. The letter killeth. He is pleased that the speaker's remark about the possibility of another resolution of the House on account of a possible bill allows for the prospect of agreement. He too is looking for this bridge. When it might be found is uncertain. Bringing about a budget this year is hardly possible given the time. We are in exceptional circumstances. The principle of promptly presenting the budget is also recognised by the government, but it is said that this was already promised and not kept. And now it's, you can certainly trust us as honest people. He does not agree with the interpolation that it is unconstitutional to make expenditures whose authorization has been refused. For every interpretation, it is necessary to agree on the three factors.